Flying home over four and a half thousand miles with our dog is never easy. So after nearly 10 months, we're leaving to return to Cordelia, who is moored in Martinique in the Caribbean. Our final days are filled with guilt and excitement, leaving family and returning home. We're then hit with a bombshell just before we go and end up leaving our son in control. After lots of prepping for our five part journey home, not everything goes to plan. I can't get a hold of uh, a roar at the moment, so I don't know if we're just going to have to stay here, I suppose. What a pain in the arse. We're Steve, Annette and Gus. Home to us is a Venus 46 catch. We've just spent nearly 10 months supporting family back in the UK, but now we're ready to return to our cruising life in the Caribbean. Unfortunately, the sale of the motorhome fell through. So, uh, yeah, what a beautiful day it is today. Yeah, so it fell through, a bit of a panic because um, obviously that was our cruising fund. So it's now not our cruising fund because it's not sold. Anyway, it's still up for sale. Mike and Steve are giving it a good clean in the hope that we get a f I'm not cleaning, I'm supervising. <laughs> Too many managers around here. <laughs> so yeah, in the hope that we uh, get it sold fairly soon. What a pain in the arse it is that we've lost the cell and the motorhome, but well, just have to pull our belts in, won't we? And uh, see how it goes and keep our fingers crossed that our son can sell it for us. How? <sighs> way things go. We've just come to say goodbye to Steve's mum. Oh. And also my dad. Here we are. I'll pop my glasses. Kiss, kiss. You've been good to me. It's the magic roundabout house. Who says the roundabout? Saying goodbye to family and friends is never easy, especially when there is no booked return flight. It's a bittersweet moment, especially when leaving parents. Though goodbyes may bring tears, they also reveal the strength within us to move forward. How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. We came back to support our family and hopefully we have managed to do that. We chose this nomadic life and already we look back at our five years of cruising and wonder in amazement at what we have achieved. But the guilt of leaving family is hard. However, I do know that we will be back. Steve thinks that we're going to end the Antarctic. Look at that. You're going to be absolutely boiling. Absolutely boiling. We're ready to go. Bags are packed. Bags are packed and we're ready to go. It's going to be cold out there. Ten months ago we brought two large suitcases of winter clothes back with us for storage. Now we're taking three cases back with us of boat parts and Steve's pants. Yes, we've definitely got all three suitcases. <coughs> she don't want to be seen in her yeah. <laughs> Hi. Unlike the trip back to the UK where we had to move heaven and earth to get Gus back onto British soil, leaving the UK with him is easier. We fly to Paris, we fly from Paris to Martinique, we have a hire car in Martinique to get us to the marina and then dinghy out to the mooring field where Cordelia is waiting for us. We leave the UK at 11.30 in the morning and arrive at Cordelia, should be about 8pm the same night. Just been dropped off by our son Michael. We're at Heathrow Terminal 4. We got a hell of a journey. So we're going from here to Paris. Paris to Martinique. 
and then when we get to Martinique we've got to pick up a car and uh, after we picked up the car and we get to La Marine which is where the um, which is where Cordelia is uh, we've, we've got, got to pick up a dinghy that we've never seen before <laughs> and then drive it in the dark and find the boat and try and remember where it is out in the bay with a thousand other boats. Yeah. Apart from that, it's all good. It's all like, be easy. <laughs> so fingers crossed it all, it all, uh, yeah, it goes smoothly. It's gone smoothly so far. This is <laughs> part one of about five parts of the journey back. Yeah. Anyway, really looking forward to it. See catch you on the other side. Yeah, catch you later. Yeah, see you on the other side. Bye. We are fortunate that due to Gus's size and weight, we are able to fly with him in the cabin. However, once on the flight, he's not allowed out of his travel bag until we are through immigration in both Paris and then the following flight into Martinique. Once we're in our seats on the plane, we place him on the floor under the seat in front of us. Final call to passengers on flight A51961 to Martinique. Boarding is almost complete. You cannot can believe this. But the, the plane from the UK to Charles de Gaulle was nearly an hour late. And we, we had an hour and 20 minutes to get through at Charles de Gaulle. We are absolutely <laughs> well, we're, we're, That's a lot of running. No, we had to run from one side of the airport to the other and get on a shuttle as well. And then when we get to check in to get on the plane, because we're British, they needed to stamp our passports. Stamp us out, I think. Does it stamp yeah, us yeah, out? Stamp us out, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Crazy, crazy. So, sorry. No, I think that's stamp us in. Maybe stamp us in. Anyway, we're can hardly breathe <laughs> and we're just about to get on the flight to Martinique. Gus has been brilliant but he is a bit fractious because unfortunately he hasn't been able to get out has he? No. Anyway we now really will see you on the other side. We're currently on the flight to Fort de France a um, little bit late leaving thank god. Still not quite caught my breath absolutely dripping in sweat which is really nice because it's a nine hour flight poor Gus is not happy because he's not been out of the bag and his bag I'll just show you anyway we made it I was almost in tears when we got to customs and they ripped everything out of Steve's bag so 20 minutes to run through the airport and then they rip everything out of his bag don't they yeah, because they thought I was a drugs mule. Helen? They thought I was a drugs mule. But it turned out it was your handbag in there that caused them the distress. No, God, I've still got a dry throat while I've been running. Anyway, hopefully on our way soon. I don't want to tempt fate, but we're going to be late at landing, which means we're going to be late picking up the car. Let's get over one drama and then, and then create another drama. Oh, okay. We're going to miss this plane. We're going to miss this plane. It's missed. We didn't miss the plane. Now, got over that. Now she's worried about the car. Oh dear, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. We can always get the car and sleep in the car. Yeah. Well, we're in Martinique anyway. <laughs> just just yeah. waiting for the shuttle to go and pick up the car. Yeah, <laughs> and what? it's hot. Yeah. It's very hot. Can't complain. No. Always complaining about it being cold. We were no. the last people out of the airport. The very last people's yeah. cases I, came I in. Those were the last bags out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, we're just going to go and get the car now. Just uh, at Europa Car picking up the car, we hope. Seems to be a bit of a queue here. 
it's hot, it's late, we've still got to go shopping yet to go and get some water and a few bits and pieces to take back to the boat. <laughs> We're in Lamarin. Steve's got his head torch on already. <laughs> We've got to be prepared. We're just on our way to go and find the uh, dinghy that Aurora's told us she's left us. Um, gosh, she's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'll leave her details below. Um, yeah, fantastic. But anyway, yeah, we're just going off to find her dinghy, which she sent us for the weekend. Now oh, there it is. There it is, the orange one. Exactly where she said it was going to be. You might not even be able to see it, but I can see it. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. I can't wait to see Cordelia. I really can't. It's going to be dark out there, though. Hear the bird. Just off to find our boat now. Cordelia, here we come. <laughs> gone perfectly we managed to find the boat um, but we haven't got any keys to get in so we're here but not here we're a bit stuck don't really know what to do because unfortunately we also couldn't find a supermarket open so we've got no water Duff it. you got any euros yeah, I've got 10 euros why well go and find a bar so we're on Cordelia, but we can't get in because there's no keys. <laughs> can't get hold of uh, a roar at the moment, so I don't know. We're just going to have to stay here, I suppose. What a pain in the ass! Join us next time to find out what happened to the keys and also where we show you the very sad shambles and filthy state that we find Cordelia in. Steve, Gus and I would like to say a massive thank you to all of our viewers, patron and coffee supporters for the love and support that you've shown us over the last 10 months. Just for a short while whilst we are sorting out Cordelia and getting her ready to sail this winter season through the Caribbean, we will only be putting videos out once a fortnight. We hope you all understand and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Ciao for now! <laughs>